need to go to the absolute limit. You can then save your energy for the events that you're maybe not so strong at and then buy the stones tomorrow, buy the events that maybe if you'd given 100% on, you might be struggling. You've still got that energy to, to kind of perform a little bit better. That is a huge advantage to do well, you know, in, in terms of being able to watch the other competitors. And I, I believe the first event is the only event where they are going in the order of registration. Yeah. You know, the first to sign up were the last to go. But every event from here on out is going to be going based off of placing. Yeah. So the athletes that did well, like it's you said. It's quite an interesting way that Lynn runs it, that he allows the first person to register to be the last to go. He's rewarding that kind of, you know, the keenness to, to get in there and, and get signed up early. Well, at the same time, it, it does make things easier from the show running standpoint to get athletes yeah. registering sooner versus later. So <laughs> you, you, can, you can have that incentive for that first one, but <laughs> the athletes do get to earn their advantage from every event to follow. Absolutely. So we are moving on to our under 90 kilo men's class. This is an exciting class. Uh, pressing almost 300 pounds overhead for repetitions. We have six kegs. On top of the average. 195 pounds, 134 kilos. There are 11 heats in this category of athlete. That is a uh, 44 competitors. This is going to be a stacked class as well. Just looking through some of these names. Our first heat is only two athletes. Garimu Aipin. Aipin or Aipene of yeah. New Zealand? Nigarumu is a former champion as well. Unable to come last year, but he's almost like a lineal champion. He's not been beaten. So he is here to show everyone what he's capable of. And then he's versus Aaron Blackford of the USA in lane number two. But when we have a linear champion, like you said, you can just imagine that this guy is coming here to keep that momentum rolling by any means necessary. And look how impressive this is. I've seen him on axles and overhead before. Very impressive athlete. And he is an athlete. He's not just a strong man, he's an athlete. Looking at how well those reps moved. I mean, seven on the board with 295 pounds within the first 30 seconds. That is some momentum. I mean, anyone getting double figures with these type of weights, they are scoring huge points. Serious stuff, Laz. He's biting his energy well. He, he has one of more. the hardest names to pronounce. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> he does. I, I feel bad if I mispronounce it, especially with someone as renowned as him, himself. We're approaching the 10-second mark. He needs one more rep to get that double digit. He needs to move. This is it. With the likes of Nikolai Myers coming up later, he needs as many reps as he can. He rested a little bit too long there. But nine reps is quite, quite a score. Nine especially reps this to, week? to start off this massive division, this massive class of athletes. Okay. Our second heat in our men's under 90, Lars Oivind Aurin of Norway in lane one. Lane number two, Paul Simbeye of, Nam of Zambia. In lane number three, Jean Arthur Pretorius of South Africa. And lane number four, Marcus Lane of Finland. An amazing coming together of many nations here at this World Championship event. Simbae looking very powerful on the early reps. Relying maybe a little too much on the upper body, not getting quite enough leg drop. That was better on that. That was better. Rep. I think that second rep was things were just a little bit off on his launch. Timing so important on this event. Utilize the whole body. Nice. What a back bend there. Really yeah. getting under it to use those, those pecs to help power it up. As you said, we've got six kegs on that apparatus now. Simbae such a is on six repetitions. Lane on four. Pretorius on one. With such a big apparatus. I can just imagine what that downforce feels like of that thing coming down on them. Three, two, one. That's solid performances. Six reps. 
leading that heat, but falling short of Nagarimu. But with Nagarimu getting nine repetitions, I think six is very good, to be fair. It is, it is. Heat three, we'll start with Kai Kendrick of Norway in lane one. In lane two, Stian Lonenthur of Norway. In lane number three, Anthony Martin of Australia. And in lane number four, Dan Benson of England. That's some strong Norway representation here. Yeah. A land of mountains, stones, and fjords. Lots of strength coming from that part of Northern Europe. The great Sven Carlsen inspiring so many Norwegian athletes. A legend. And that inspiration doesn't stop at Norway. No, indeed. He's um, someone that's inspired many athletes that across the world. Position. I'm sure he'll be back home watching, cheering on his fellow countrymen. Lane number four, Benson on his way to rep three. There's a couple of points I want to make out on the rules, just because we haven't mentioned them. The athletes cannot thrust to the weight from a dead stop position. They have to stand up with the weight, and then they have to push press or strict press the weight. They're not allowed to jerk and rebend the knees. It's, it has to be a strict press or a push press. Now, to touch off of what you just said, they cannot start the press from the bottom with the apparatus touching the ground, but if they want to squat down and on their recovery, launch it from the bottom of their squat without the apparatus touching down, they are allowed to do that. No, it's not allowed to touch the machine. So when they get measured up the day before, correct, it's correct. not allowed to touch. Correct. They can squat down once they've, they've lifted the weight. That's correct. But it's not allowed to touch the apparatus. They That's have what to be I said. Measured if, up. if they squat down and it's still not touching the apparatus, That's they can fine. start their press from the bottom of that squat as long yes, as yeah, it is absolutely. not touching that apparatus. And we saw some of our, our women's, our strongman athletes, Using, utilizing that technique, which can be energy efficient, but also leaves a lot of moving parts. But this is a, uh, you know, we, we want to see the shoulder power showcased here. We don't want to be relying on exploding it off the ground from a stopped position. I love that they're using a car jack to adjust this. <laughs> it's really, really clever. They've got a drill and a car jack and they're adjusting it so easily. You know, I, I love when the big power tools and machinery come out to adjust the weights that we are expecting a single human individual to lift on their own. I mean, this is such a huge operation. The OSG team have done a fantastic job just putting this competition together and so far doing an incredible job making sure it's running as smoothly and as quickly as possible with over 400 competitors. That is a huge, huge challenge. A huge challenge, but I'm, we are both looking at a well-oiled machine here. Indeed. All right, this is... I believe our fourth heat. Kevin Manson of Scotland in lane one. Braden Sowell of USA in lane two. Volker Bauer of Germany in lane number three. And David Zemlika of the Czech Republic in lane four. Athletes take their position. Manson, Swall, Bauer, and Zemlika. Lanes one to four. Still nine repetitions is the target to beat. Zimbika is our first athlete to get a point on this heat. Bauer gets that first rep at 300 pounds almost, 295 pounds on this apparatus. Pun intended, these athletes are hard pressed to get every single rep. Two repetitions there for Bauer. 25 seconds remaining. This Viking press is really, really separating the men from the boys in this under 90 kilo class. Very heavy <laughs> weight, is. 134 kilos, just shy of 300 pounds. All three of those athletes going to the very end. I know Manson kind of knew where his limit was, but this is a world championship event. You know, you really want to give it your all if you know you have it in the tank. Look how efficiently this team come out and adjust everything so fast. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a pit crew in NASCAR. It is. It's Just very so much like that. You have to have that fast turnover yeah. so they can get back to work. I love it. All right. Our fifth heat. 
Diego Valenzuela, another Chilean athlete in lane number one. Chandler Caudill of USA in lane two. Seth Larson of USA in lane three. And Sean Pope of Canada in lane four. Nine reps is the count to beat. Lane number four looks like he has some good momentum going forward, utilizing a strong back bend, bringing those pectoral muscles into play. Lane three, Caudill has three reps. Pope is looking good. He needs four reps to get first so far. Look at the back bend there, but very strong pressing. Seven repetitions for Pope. Watch the back bend on Pope when he goes for this. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, he almost got folded in half there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's wow. scary to see when they bend back like that. And I'm seeing Pope's footwear. He looks to be wearing a very flat type shoe, while all three of the other athletes are wearing the raised heel weightlifting shoes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, oh, the effort put into that as well. Caudill was when you, looking so close. When you go to that extreme and you put that much energy and you don't get the rep, that's devastating. It's devastating, and, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but the chance of that following him throughout the rest of the competition is all too high. Absolutely. You know, the back could be feeling it. He might feel fine now, but give him an hour or so, and they've got long waits in between events. By the time he starts the farmer's walk in potentially three hours' time, his back will be feeling that. Once he sits down for that first time for a good five minutes and stands back up, it, the feelings might set in. Okay, our sixth heat. Cesar Sierra of the USA in lane one. Alan Evan, Elvin of England in lane two. Aaron Fondry of USA in lane three. And Derek Owens of USA in lane four. Aaron Fondry, a powerhouse who has competed highly at the national and world level, but took some time off from the sport for maybe one or two years. It's good to see him back here at the world stage where he belongs. And Derek Owens, a Texas athlete, he owns Battle Axe Barbell in North and Central Texas. Are we expecting some big pressing from these athletes? You know, Aaron was quite a powerhouse when he was last highly competitive in the sport. I'm, I'm very curious to see this new package that he has brought with his uh, comeback, I'll say. But Owens, an established coach, a contest promoter. I'm curious to see how he does. And there he goes. Owens is off. I think Owens is on the warpath. Owens looking good. Elvin doing very well. And that is an impressive hairline from Elvin. That is. It's a... I, I can I'm, get behind that. I'm kind of getting jealous of having you sat next to me and these well, guys coming out with these flowing locks. You know, Laz, I, I put my hair up in a ponytail so it wouldn't show on the camera. <laughs> Just, you know, I'll, I'll let your beard take the glory <laughs> of, of this little snapshot here. Look at this. We've got six reps from Owens. Elvin just locks out his fifth rep there. Owens needs to step on the gas if he wants to get more reps. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. Just lost his footing there. That, that was... That would look heavy. Yeah, that hurt my knee watching. So easy to try and get back under there, but maybe it's best now with six reps to just save that energy. Three, two, one. Oh, well, he, he did give it his all on that last little takeoff there. but he got Six reps as well. We've seen already that is a fantastic performance in this class. Fondry falling short of getting a single rep. Uh, I, I will say that I do remember Fondry being a better deadlifter than he was a presser back in the day. So more things to come from him. But Owens, that, that little spill he took forward, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't follow him through the rest of the event because he was looking strong out the gates. All right, our seventh heat. Luke Cromwell of Scotland in lane one. Mike Dell of England in lane two. Dennis Labreche of Canada in lane three. And Mark Cummins of England in lane number four. 134 kilograms, 295 pounds. That is a long way up for lane two, a very tall athlete. 
he lost his counter there, but I think up, he, got, he did I get that think first, he got rep. first rep. Yeah. Cromwell in lane one looks to be a little too far back in the feet. 30 seconds remain. It's so important through. to get your positioning correct on these type of events if you want to be as efficient as possible. Otherwise, you end up wasting energy. It is, and that's a unique thing about lever lifts compared to free weight is, you know, your footing can really dictate how energy efficient the press is from chest to lockout. Also, if I can press, especially a side hand like this, it's not the same as a barbell where you try and get those elbows up high. You kind of want to squeeze them in a bit more, have your bicep and forearm compressed into each other and almost try and get the tricep and lat compressed into each other. Then you get a little bit more spring out of your body, whereas if you try and just force the elbows up like you would on a barbell, there's nothing sitting there, right. and you're wasting that energy. That springboard effect can do a lot of work for the athlete if they know how to utilize it. I think we only had one rep from lane number two, and all three other athletes failed to get a single point on that heat, but at nearly 300 pounds of load being pushed overhead, this is some tremendous work at play. Our eighth heat Gardar Olofsson of Iceland. I dare say I might be mispronouncing his first name there, but our Icelandic athlete in lane number one, Marshall Kruther of New Zealand in lane two, Gavin McNamee, McNamee of Ireland, McNamee in lane number three, and Justin Weaver of the USA in lane number four. Weaver in lane number four, looking good. Very solid, up to five reps already. Six, no problem. Weaver looks to be an athlete that has tremendous sh shoulder and arm strength. Yeah, you can see the thickness in the arms and shoulders there. He needs very two wide more reps. for an under under 90 kilo athlete. It's two more reps, and he's in first from this class of athlete. If he can get it, he's got plenty of time. He needs to take a breather now. We've lost our counter for lane number two, but I believe we're still on zero reps there. Olofsson again, as we mentioned, that kind of elbows, not really... I'm sure on a barbell, he's very efficient. But on this Viking press, he's a little bit different. He's quite a tall athlete. Yeah. A lot of distance to travel. Good, solid performance there. Well, lane four falls just a bit short. Eight repetitions. Eight reps. Heat nine. We have this is one of three heats left. Chris Jenkins of Wales in lane one. Jess Reeve of the USA in lane two. Brandon McNamara of the USA in lane three. And Joey Stemke of USA in lane number four. Chris Jenkins, an excellent power lifter. Just starting to dabble his toe into strongman a little bit more. He was here last year. Let's see if another year of strongman training has been paying off. Brandon McNamara in lane three with the jean shorts. He's got the George's power going on there. <laughs> McNamara with a rep. Reeven Jenkins also first rep on the board. Now Jenkins has to be careful. His footing is changing on the way up. Yeah. Like you said, we cannot have double dipping or, or a shifting of the footing as almost like a jerk type motion. This is heavy weight in this class. Heavy weight indeed. But world's strongest man under 90 kilograms, that title demands heavy. I think this could be the, f would this be the first class that hasn't gone over double figures so far? I believe so. I think even in our 50s, we had um, one athlete go to Patterson. Patterson. Patterson, yep. Strict pressing it. <laughs> that was unbelievable. 
But Reeven Jenkins, walk away with two points, or, or two reps. Two reps. Uh, that'll mean more than two points, most likely, but... So we've got some very impressive athletes coming up now in this next heat. Nicholas O'Hare, Leroy Smith, Nikolai Myers, and Ryan Lage. This is going to be a heat Myers, that we could potentially see double figures in. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Nick, as he likes to go by. Yeah, and that is a, a beard that puts mine to shame. That is impressive. It's the, there's some strong beards here today. Uh, I, the, the smell of beard oil is emanating from this entire <laughs> arena. I'm looking to see some big numbers from Nick, but all these other guys as well. Leroy is impressive. He's a good all-round athlete. Very nervous last year. Kind of underperformed a little bit on the overhead just due to nerves. But he's feeling in good shape this year. Oh, Leroy is sitting strong with four reps. Now Myers is unbelievable when it comes to a dumbbell. We'll see that later in the contest. But I think right now that nine reps is looking solid. Leroy working hard for that sixth rep. Can he get it? He does lock wow. out just. Wow. He's asking for the time. Got time for one more. That lockout was blood vessel popping. Yeah. He's got to go now. Got to go. Come on, Leroy. Three, two, Uncle Nick. One. Wow. A last minute, a last second that tie right there. shows why he is a champion. Getting that rep in just when it counts. Knowing how to time and bide your energy when you put it down. This is one of the things here is when you do put that down and you're in that state of fatigue, time goes by much faster than you actually feel. The athlete has to be so well tuned with knowing how fast time is moving, how to not get spoiled by the rest. Because we've seen it all too often up to this point that some athletes set that bar down then they hear all of a sudden three seconds left and then they're rushed to get that last rep and they just can't do it. But Nick, <laughs> right in the nick of time. <laughs> that was perfect. All right, this is our final heat. Heat number 11 in our men's under 90 category. Tyler Davis, Devin Ford, Andrew Pepiot, and Cameron Peters, all USA athletes getting under the 295-pound Viking press. Now, Cameron Peters is an absolute machine. I got to see him compete at the Southwest Regional Qualifier to get here, and he just dominated the field. Ooh. Struggled there. But he's already at seven. He only needs three reps to come on, out in first. I think he's on six. I think okay, he, six. They didn't quite give him that last one. But still, very strong. There we go. That looks more solid. Kept his balance that time. Good, solid rep. He's a strong man. Strong man, indeed. Seeing that elbow posture kind of a little bit different than what you were talking about there, a little bit too far out to the side. But he is a smooth operator, and he is. He needs one more rep to tie the lead. Don't know that it's there. Ten seconds, just under. No. Three. Wow, Ford, Ford just getting that last reps. one. That is good. Strong heat, very strong heat. And, you know, one thing with this Viking press, they do have the option to put it down, which can be good, it can be bad. That does involve a dead stop squat, albeit it's a very short squat, but versus standing with the apparatus and keeping it held there, you have to imagine that little battery indicator on your cell phone, right? The, as soon as you stand up with that weight, Regardless if you're pressing it, that indicator is going down, 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 yeah. down. You're when losing you are energy. standing up with that, that's like having all your apps open and draining the <laughs> battery really <laughs> fast. It really <laughs> is. So the athlete has to walk that line very well. Do they put it down and have to squat down, pick it back up again, or do they maintain it and hold it there in the hopes of getting some more reps? It, this, the only way the athlete can effectively navigate that is through effective and rep repetitive training. You know? So our former champion, Nigarumu, taking the win with nine repetitions. Then we had a tie with Justin Weaver and Cameron Peters, both on eight repetitions. Another tie for third place, Sean Pope and Devon Ford, both on seven. Lots of ties. Then, wow, how many athletes do we have on six repetitions? Four athletes. Paul, Derek, Leroy, and Nikolai. 
Oh. All four athletes getting six reps, so it's going to be a, a nice split of points there. Alan Elvin in the next position with five, and then we've got four. Number of athletes on three, a number of athletes on two. Aaron Blackford there in 20th position on one, I think with another seven odd athletes on one repetition, yeah. and then only three athletes failing to get a rep there. So well, no, I we've got, got a whole other <laughs> list of athletes. <laughs> they, they were teasing us then. I thought that was um, going to be a... With a class yes, of 42 competitors. And I'll tell you what, that shows how challenging this class is, is in terms of the weights, because it's a light body weight still, but we are ramping the weights up in terms of what we expect from these athletes to lift. Essentially 100 pounds over their own body weight. Four <laughs> reps. And we have our great defending champion walking away with nine reps yeah. at in excess of 100 pounds of what he had to weigh in at. Leroy Smith and Nikolai Myers there. Both will be looking to challenge towards the end. But our next class of athletes will be our men under 105 kilograms. So this is our men under 231 pounds. The same weight will stay on the farmer's handles for our men's under 90 kilos. These are our men's weighing under 200 pounds if we're using the imperial system. 310 pounds in each hand, 140.5 kilos in each hand. Up first, we will start with two men in heat number one, Lars Oivind Orin of Norway and Kai Kendrick of Norway. Norway two Norwegians. Two Norwegians. Going okay. head to head. And I see another Norwegian waiting in heat number two. Kendrick takes off. Nice start. A little bit too hinged over. He lost his balance. You need to make sure that that lean is subtle. His was a little excessive. Too much of a hip hinge. Pulled him forward. Had him lose balance. Three hundred ten pounds. This is three hundred ten reasons in each hand why it should not leave the ground. But our Norwegians are here for a reason, and they want to leave every bit of it here on the field. Kendrick fighting for every single inch he can get. So close, Kendrick, to clearing that first length. Gets a last little but bit of not, distance. Not quite enough. Martins, have you competed in Norway? I've not competed in Norway, but I just recently visited there for a Strength Unknown video in my uh, YouTube channel, and that was phenomenal. I visited uh, the uh, ch like childhood home of old Haugen, got to visit Trondheim with him, his, um, his old gyms and, and stomping grounds, and also uh, the Feifor Strength Festival, which was phenomenal. Oh, man, that Feifor has been on my to-do list for quite some time. I, I would I, really love to get there next year. I didn't year. understand it until I got there, and now I absolutely get it. For anyone watching, whatever the Fay Force Strength Festival is on, if you have the chance to go to Norway, it's beautiful. It, it, it's very relaxed. Um, I mean, just the mountain views, the lake, and the, just the history of the place, and uh, the events are phenomenal. They, they do a great job putting together equipment. And, man, the food, too. Oh, I, I, can't, I cannot wait till when I finally get the opportunity to go to Norway. Will you be at FIFA next year? I would hope so. Well, I we'll hope that I will be there, too. And, uh, but I want to be. I, I hope to be there, too. So maybe we can meet there at the, at the Strength Festival Ooh. and have some fun lifting things in the mountains. Speaking of Norway, we have another Norwegian athlete in lane one, Stian Lonnun Tu. Then uh, lane two, Anthony Martin from Australia. Lane three, Kevin Manson from Scotland. Uh, Braden Sola in lane four from the USA. And Sal is the first one to clear the distance. Our American on the field. He's moving down on the return, looking strong, looking stable. Does have a drop halfway down, but he's right back up on the pick. This final stretch is where everything counts. He needs to be secure and just clear it. Finishing is so important to get that time on the board. Only the top athletes are going to be finishing the course. All and right. Sal finishes it. Well done. Braden clears the course. With 
Two of, and Manson. Two of Norway going the farthest distance out of the Norwegians. Strong run. And we have our first finisher in this division with Bra Braden Sowell, the American. Getting a reset for heat number three. And Braden finishes with a time of 42.34 seconds. Puts him on the board. You guys, um, as you're watching, resetting is incredibly, incre it's taxing. I've done it before. I've been a volunteer in shows like this. And it, it's sometimes more exhausting than competing itself. So uh, absolute huge thank you to uh, the, guy, the gentlemen and ladies out there putting that hard work. It's it's grueling. They look like they have all the tools that they need to get the job done very and expeditedly. They're, they're doing great. It's like a NASCAR pit crew out there. That's exactly <laughs> what I said. <laughs> you know, it, it evokes that, that same sort of feeling. You know, get in, get out, very quick, boom, 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 let's go. Yeah, they got it. And then they the roaring the of the engines. So here we have our third heat. Cesar Sierra of USA in lane one. Aaron Fondry, USA in lane two. Luke Cromwell, Scotland, lane three. And Dennis Labriche, Canada, in lane four. It's good to see Aaron Fondry back in action. Oh, wow, look at Cromwell go. That is some speed. Oh, but he drops it. A little too hasty there. Every pick. You need to be patient on getting the stability. Then the speed comes. But he's still going strong. Fondry, if he can keep Fondry's his hold. He's making up, and Fondry catches on, up Aaron. and passes him. And he takes the it. win. Wow. Incredible. Wow. I know he's we'll happy see, about that. We'll see if that time is uh, quick enough to beat Seoul of USA from the previous heat. I believe so. We still got 24 seconds on the clock. That oh, that will absolutely. put Aaron Fondry as our new leader. There we go. Somewhere finishing around the 30-second mark. We'll get that official time shortly. The Brish from Canada inching closer and closer to that finish line. Oh, so close with Labreche. He gave it his all there. He really did. Let's get time for Fondry. 23.85 seconds for Aaron. He is our new leader. What a tremendous time to set as the mark to beat for the rest of these athletes in store. I'm going to be curious to see if anyone could beat Mark Felix's time from uh, these athletes here. They got the same weights. Of course, these are the younger guys. They're lighter. We'll see if they... Uh, have that speed to beat experience. Yeah, these guys have the the youth, the spry bodies, but you know, <laughs> Mark, Nick, they've been around. They, they've been around. They, they got a little bit more body weight. I will tell you that, but still, there there will be some bragging rights involved from from either of these groups, Absolutely. depending on what winds that, up happening. That would be a big feat. If I were in their position, I'd be very proud to be either. Uh, Nick Best or Mark Felix. These uh, guys are making slight adjustments. We've got Aaron Blackwood. Blackford, he was just making some tweaks to his handle positioning. That's very important. When I set up for farmers, I like to have the handles directly underneath my shoulders. Uh, if they're any wider, it, it usually slows down the pick because the farmers have to sway inward before you can go up. So it's really important to align those forces so that way when you're picking it, the farmers go up. They don't have to wobble side to side or sway inwards, and you could just get running. Joey Stample with a fast start, but a little too eager. Quickly fall, uh, loses balance, drops the weight. Well, Stamper and Olofsson are the first to get there. Joey Stample moving fast. He's moving. And he finishes it. That's a good feat. And that was, I think, a good time. We'll find out very soon. Wow. Olofsson right behind him. Let's see what we got. Kruther still working on his first length. And Cummins on the return. Well, did I say Stamp? My bad. Yeah. Cummins. Cummins won that. Well done. No, Stampkin won it. Cummins is right here, still, still working, still giving his absolute best. 
I see. Oh, he's feeling that in the pecs a little bit. Might have gotten a little, maybe a little cramp. Hoping it's just a cramp and nothing more. Ouch. Joey Stamp, our new leader, 22.34 seconds. Nicely done, Joey. The bar keeps getting reset and pushed higher and higher and higher. And as we move down this roster through our heats, we're getting to where the athletes who placed highly on the Viking press, the, the, the showstoppers, are starting Blackford to come out. We're just reaching up to the sky for some extra power. Yeah, in, in lane one, channeling Ryan Largay. It. Lane two, Aaron Blackford, like you said, channeling the power from above. Lane number three, John Arthur Pretorius of South Africa. And lane number four, David Zemlika of the Czech Republic. I always love watching the subtle uh, shifts these guys make in their farmers. But this group looks like they all set it up exactly the same. All handles touching, just a very oh. narrow stance. But Largay and Blackford just very quick out the gates. Largay accelerating well. I'm loving the view on this stream right here. Like we are, it's almost like watching a, a relay at the Olympics for swimming, just seeing all the athletes from the side. Blackford just, oh. look at him. <laughs> he looks to the side and well laughs out. Well Blackford. Largay yeah, right behind looks him. Looks like that channeling that energy, calling it from the skies worked out for him. I believe I just heard that Blackford is our new leader. Let me wait for that time to get posted on the screen before I say it. Colin Bryce sure, sure likes to take a long break. I guess he really was uh, burnt out there. Huh? <laughs> you know, he's, he's got to get the refreshments going on. You know? Make sure to refuel the tanks replenish. Aaron Blackford, our new leader, 18.81 18. seconds. Still not quite as fast as Nick Best or Mark Felix, but it is right it, there knocking on the door. Every heat seems to be getting a little bit faster, a little bit better as we get onto the stronger athletes. And, you know, Ryan Largy was right behind him. Ryan may just have gotten under that 20-second mark. We will see. But that is a new mark to beat out of Aaron Blackford. Our sixth heat steps out to the arena. Diego Valenzuela of Chile in lane one. Seth Larson, USA, lane two. Mike Dell, England, lane three. And Gavin McNamee from Ireland in lane number four. I love seeing uh, all these people from all around the world watching this sport grow. I remember when I was first getting started off, it really was just the USA and, and basically just uh, Europe. And now we got South America, uh, people from Africa, and even China coming together here to compete. It's amazing. It really is. And look at me. My goodness. That looks just. fast. That may contend with Blackford. And Dell, controlled and stable behind him, may not have that same lightning speed, but he looked good. He looked strong. He is definitely getting some good points there. Valenzuela with the finish, Chilean, right there behind. And that finish is very important. It's going to get him some good points. Seth Larson, giving it his best, still getting distance, still has fuel in the tank. He calls it there. He knows he's got some. Back-powered events later to come. He wants to stay. Gavin McNamee, new leader. 15. Every point single heat. Four consistently seven. climbing up. I love it, man. It's an incredible display of strength hey, and power. That's our new fastest time with this weight. That is. That beats both Mark Felix and Nick Best. Well we, done. We have it. <laughs> it happened. And you know, Martins, we still have. Four, five heats left to go. And these are five heats comprised of our best finishers on the Viking press. So the guys who have already proven themselves to be strong. Stronger than the rest, at least with one event. They might be even faster. Incredible. It kind of uh, gives me a mix of nervousness and excitement. <laughs> to, <laughs> to see to just see. how fast he might yeah, get. Yeah. But oddly enough, sometimes the best pressers, are, they tend not to be the fastest guys. 
You're right. But, I mean, we, we've seen it proven in a couple of cases, you know, like Andrea Thompson, another one. And she's got back-to-back -back event wins now. Incredible. And, I mean, she did phenomenal on the Viking Press, and she won the Farmer's Walk. So there are these. It does happen. It does happen. They're rare cases. And Diamonds in the rough. That's what makes an excellent uh, strongman athlete. Ultimately, yeah. you want to be well-rounded. You don't want to have an ace event. You want all evened out strength across all events, and that's what uh, gets you to win. McNamara, Bauer, and Reeve. Jenkins is missing in lane three, but Bauer clears the course first in this heat. McNamara transitioning as nice is Reeve. Bauer moving steady, gonna finish it up. Boom. Nice, good finish. No mistakes. Nice and smooth. He looked good. On the on the board needs to get time. that thing up. McNamara gets it. Finishes it. And that's what matters. Fifteen seconds left. Will he finish it? Let's find out. Jess Reeve. So close. I'm not quite sure if they're going to count it. Well, the one handle that did not flip looks to be over the finish line. This is where the refs are just going to have to make whatever call they think is appropriate. I think Aaron is, that's Aaron Molin right now. He's checking it and... I don't know if they're going to give it to him. We'll, we'll have to see. They, they get, I see a thumbs up there. Volker Bauer finishing with 22.34 seconds, I believe I saw there. So not quite fast enough to inch out our first two places, but that does tie dead on. Millisecond for millisecond with Joey Stemke. Incredible. And still good points. Great points. It's in, and this is a points game. You know, if, if he is vying for a spot in the final, which I'm sure he is, he did exactly what he needed to mm -hmm. to give himself some contention. But here we have our next heat, heat number eight. Andrew Pepiot, USA, lane one. Dan Benson, England, lane two. Chandler Caldill, USA, lane three. And Nicholas O'Hare, USA, lane four. Benson just blasting off. Are we going to get a new fastest time? Quick transition. It all comes down to this. How quickly can he get back? He's coming can right he at us. He's going to have to good, accelerate and dive to get that fastest time. Boom. Boom. Very smooth. Beautiful run by Benson. Caudill dropping just short. Got plenty of time to make up that distance. O'Hare and Pepiot working on their return. Give me everything. Pepiot looked good on that pick. He's got a lot of strength. But there's a little bit of wobble taking place. I think the endurance in his fingers is just not there to maintain that close grip. Dan Benson, 18.1 seconds. It's a good time. Sub 20. Good enough for third. Sub 20 seconds. Right, coming up next, we have uh, Tyler Davis of USA, Marcus Lane of Finland, Alan Elvin, England, and Paul Simbai from Z Zambia. I, re I really like these guys from Zambia. I, I was talking to them. Um, They've been fabricating and making their own equipment. Just try, whatever they could find, put together, just to be able to train these events. I love it. They, 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 That's where you get uh, that strongman ingenuity. I'm rooting for them. Like they've been just what they, they don't even have the. Like, uh, their coaches are videos that they watch. They've been watching my videos and all these other pro videos just to figure out how to do these events, so they could come here and compete. That's awesome, man. Very inspiring, and it's so good to see that representation here from their corner of the world and all the other And they're just so the happy to be here. They're I love so it. excited. You, you really feed off that positivity. But Davis just blitzing off. Wow, that is fast, Davis. Four, three, five, six, 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 five, six
He's looking good. He's got eye. Oh, Simbai costly. Just, Simbai just came a little short. Had to uh, push a little a extra inch to finish up that distance. Oh, he's looking strong. Uh, he, Simba, if somebody can get this event finished, that'll still be good enough points to put him in the running for the finals. Come on, Simba. So, so close. So close. And he gets it. A good time, too. Elvin moving down. He's got the locks flowing. He's fighting hard to finish half the course. 310 pounds per hand. This is heavy, heavy weight. Just grip failing. Looking at the hand, making sure everything is still hanging on. Clearly a strong individual. Also came up to me earlier for uh, advice on maintaining long hair, and uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have much to give him. It's, it's a struggle. Did you tell him your favorite conditioner? Um. No, but I did tell him that coconut oil is what I usually go to. Uh, after my, my hair is nice and wet, I'll put in some coconut oil. That, that really helps. You know, coconut is just one of those amazing, amazing foods that just has so many it, uses outside of just eating it. And it yeah. is the elixir of life in many ways. It is awesome. <laughs> I am a fan so of that, coconut. So is that the least secret? It is the coconut oil. It's, my, it's not a secret. It'll just uh, give it out to the world. Put it out to the world. Let the good vibes and power of coconut be shared may, and bounty may, by all. May hair and manes flow <laughs> wonderfully through the wind. Beautifully luscious, luscious logs. I just want everyone to be as majestic as they can. Here we have our 10th heat, second to last. Derek Owens, USA, lane one. Leroy Smith, UK, lane two. Nikolai Myers, USA, lane three. And Sean Pope, Canada, in lane four. Uncle Nick, moving fast in lane number three. Vying for a top spot, needs to beat McNamee with 15.47 seconds. Can he do it? What a Myers. finish by Myers, yes. Maybe it happened. That was fast. Three finishes so far to this heat. Derek Owens still moving down the course with juice in the tank. He's 75% done. This is heavyweight. This is near top end. Still got 10 seconds, just slightly under. He's going to have to really dive forward for it. Not quite. Very close to that Very finish close line. Very close indeed. Gave it his all. Nick Myers right there. 17.88 seconds. Not quite fast enough to beat out McNamee, but fast nonetheless. And I believe that is fast enough for second place. We'll have to get the official confirmation after we have the scores tabulated shortly. Our final heat steps onto the arena. Devin Ford in lane number one. Justin Weaver, lane number two. Cameron Peters, lane number three. All USA athletes. And in lane number four, Nirimu Ahipin from New Zealand. The linear champion did not get to compete last year, but he has never been defeated here before. All four Man. athletes pr proven on the Viking press, ready to take on this massive farmer's walk. Sprints. Cameron moving with a little bit longer stride than Nerimu. Peters halfway. Peter, Peters on his way back, looking steady, not making any mistakes. Oh, he's got oh, a hold he's on. He's making a little bit of wobble right there at the end, but he still he makes it. it. That's going to be a good time for him. Good points. Wow. Solid finish. And you could see he really wanted it. Nerimu right behind him. Very, very close finish. We have Ford and Weaver closing in on that finish line. Ford, one more pick, he could get it. We're going to see some major juggling of points after this. As in the earlier heats, we had some good times and, uh, some of these better pressers. Um, 
didn't quite finish, so this is going to be reshuffling the board. Wow. But at least from what I can see, we had in first place, untouchable, Gavin McNamee of Ireland with 15.47 seconds. In second place, from what I can see, Nicolay Myers, 17.88 seconds. I mean, these so many sub-20 second times with 310 pounds per hand. Just incredible. So I believe Chris Jenkins, who did not make it to the arena in heat number seven, is going to be given a tip of the hat and allowed to go solo to get a time. He is representing Wales. He has traveled across the sea to get here. We want to let him contest his skill. Here goes Jenkins. No pressure. No pressure when you're going on your own. Looking good, looking strong. He's got wobbles going left and right, but he's he's maintaining it. He's holding strong. Oh, and he loses that balance. Those wobbles always catch up to you if you can't get that stability. And he finishes it. Good With time. Just a few repicks, but he still got a good time there. Good speed. I'm glad he was allowed to, to do his carry because he obviously has some skill and strength to showcase here. But we're waiting on that last time to be input to our scorekeepers and then up next we will have our men's 105 our athletes who weighed in under 231 pounds body weight will be lifting 330 pounds per hand and here's our scores Gavin McNamee first place 15.47 seconds Nikolai Myers, second, 17.88 seconds. Dan Benson, 18.1 seconds in third. Aaron Blackford, 18.81 seconds in fourth. Ryan Largay, 19.84 seconds in fifth. Interesting. Uh, these guys are actually t a lot closer in time than uh, the Masters above 50 were. They're the very tightly grouped in pack. I mean, we have top five all placing sub-20, and then spot six through ten, all placing in from 23 to 21 seconds. Just very, very tight grouping, but a high caliber of athlete does not surprise me when we have such a narrow grouping like this. Yeah. Impressive strength. And look at placings 10 through, or 11 through 20 right there. Still only 10, separate, 10 seconds separate the performances of place 11 through place 20. Very strong work in a weight that can rival some weights that super heavyweights like ourselves do face in certain events. Those were good weights. Now, I've heard it said before uh, by promoters of events that the ideal... And I'm pretty sure Mark Felix is about to surpass that. I think Ode was 57. Wow. So Felix, if he can do the next two years, he takes that title. Like I said, he showing no signs of stopping. At our men's under 90 kilo class, a two-man heat, Lars Ovind Aurin of Norway in lane one and Alan Elvin of England in lane number two. 610 pounds remains on the axle bar. Aurin looking solid on these first few reps. Alan Elvin putting the hair up for the deadlift. Usually I let the hair down for the deadlift. You like to see it flicking all over the place. I, I, I more so, I like to kind of have that barrier between me and the crowd to just <laughs> really focus on the task at hand and sharpen my, my, my clarity and the objective at hand. But so if you cut the hair, that, that, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, but at the same time, when we have rep events like this, I wouldn't get so hot. <laughs> get to breathe a little bit more. Maybe yeah. that results in more reps. Maybe. But I, I will say, the, the biggest factor there. of me not cutting my hair is the epic deadlift pictures. Oh, you yeah, do have some, you know, and also, as a pro strongman, it's quite nice to still have hair. Yeah, Most well, of us don't. You know, uh, I, there, there is thinning going on in the upper middle region of the hair, so <laughs> at, at some point, I won't have it anymore, but I'll probably cut it well before I have to cut it. 
It's, it gets hot, Lars. It gets hot. I know. I know the lower half of your face only has that problem. Believe it or not, there was a time I had long hair. <laughs> I want to see those many moons. I want to see ago. those pictures surface. You need to do a throwback <laughs> Thursday for us all one of these days. All right, heat number two: Kai Kendrick in lane one, Marshall Kruther lane two, Anthony Martin lane three, and Kevin Manson in lane number four. Low gear power to get this deadweight axle off the ground. Manson and Kendrick both managing one rep, but it looks like that could be the limit. All four athletes have been brought to a stop. Max effort at this load. I think that's it. We're just going to see that one rep out of lanes one and four. Okay, lane three, or heat three will be coming out. Mark Cummins of England in lane one, Seth Larson of USA in lane two, Andrew Pepiat of USA in lane three, and Justin Weaver, USA, lane number four. Weaver is not out there. Not sure the reason why. But they are not waiting for any athletes. No, we are moving fast right now. And I'm really enjoying it because it has been quite a long day. But there's minimal reset involved with this event. Very fast paced. You don't want to miss it if you're a competitor. Larson taking a bow. He's happy with that one. And Cummins. Oh, there's Weaver. Oh, he's his Weaver. He's late to the party. He straps himself on. He needs to go. And he gets a rep. He's got to go quick. Needs as many as he can. There's two. Three. Oh. You know, he's made a big mistake leaving it that late to get out there. He got three reps, maybe could have got four or five. Maybe. You know, at three reps, he was moving, a, started to move a little bit slowly. He so had to he sprint out there just to make it in time, though. He may well have been able to get a bit, a bit more composed, not have to rush those first few reps. You know, any, anyone who has sprinted before, especially at top speed, like you would be doing if you're missing your shot at the OSG. Well, 45 seconds is not a lot of time, as we know. It's he had to get strapped in and try and bang out as many reps as he could. There's a lot of glutes and hamstrings at work on the sprint, and that could very easily have taken some off his top end. But he got points, and that is much better than leaving here with a zero Indeed. on a deadlift event. All right. Moving on to our next heat. Tua of Norway in lane number one. O'Hare. Of USA in lane two, Owens USA in lane three, and Sierra of USA in lane number four. And I've got to say, O'Hare there looking very strong in lane number two. Look oh, at the steady grind on the way up. Tue working as hard as he can to get this first rep. Needs to make sure those knees are locked, and he gets the down signal. A great, great utilization of the hitch to get the job done. Seven for O'Hare. Our new leader in lane two. Nicholas O'Hare, USA, locking out his eighth rep at 6'10". And he looks like a powerhouse. It's 90 kilos of muscle right there. Oh, he he get... could have gotten it, possibly if he had a little bit more time. But, yeah. but solid performance and puts himself into first place. Strong showing, nonetheless. All right, moving on. Heat number five, Devin Ford of USA, lane one. Dennis Labrache, Canada, lane two. Jess Reeve, USA, lane three. And David Zemlika, Czech Republic, lane number four. Looks like we've got a few torn calluses out there from the farmer's walk. Good thing that they've got straps. Yeah. Might be a... Uh, Torn Callis won't affect the rest of the events to for today. Well, I, I wouldn't count the sandbags out, especially the heavier ones. It's, well, we'll see. Four reps for lane one and lane four. LaBrish calling it after three. Reeve calling it after two. 
Ford still out there battling for this fifth rep. Semlika locks out his fifth. That check power going strong. And he's happy. That meant a lot to him getting that fifth rep. Hopefully that fist pump right there means he set a new little PB. Yeah, could Walking well. out of here with that little trophy to take. All right. Lane number one, Braden Sal, USA. Lane two, Paul Simbe of Zambia. Lane number three, Marcus Lane, Finland. Lane number four, Chandler Caudill, USA. Okay, O'Hare still currently our leader on eight reps. Can any of these four, Swell, Simbe, Lane, or Cardill, take that? <laughs> Looking at the first reps, I'm going to say no. So now it's all about as many reps as you can get. Add to those points. Simbe on two. Swole is on one. Lane is on one. Cordell finally strapped in and moving well. He moves up to two quite quickly. Three reps. After a slow start, he's put himself into the lead. Lane matches him. And that weight is just glued to the ground all of a sudden. Lane pops off very quickly. Oh, he timed that one well. He did. He gathered strength, did what he needed to, got that fourth rep. Two the leader reps, of the two heat. Two reps, four and three. Lane number one, Brandon Minamura, USA. Lane two, Jean Arthur Pretorius, South Africa. Lane number three, Diego Valenzuela, Chile. Lane number four, Sean Pope, Canada. Athletes get strapped in. We're going to see some reps here. Lane number two, Pretorius from South Africa, just hot out the gates. Really explosive, powerful off the floor. Another deadlift Losing technique. Losing some tightness in the upper back, but he's very strong at the lower end of the lift. Similar, similar technique and posture to Daglish. That's but it. making it work for him. The key for him, and being an axle, he has the power off the floor. He gets it over his knees, then he can just work that hitch. But you have to be careful with explosive type pulls that you would utilize on a barbell because that does not work the same way. And with a dead weight like an axle, this is where we need to think about torque and really establishing that low gear power off the ground. It's not like a race car trying to take off, but like a truck trying to pull a heavy load. Absolutely. Also safer as well, long term. Yes, yes. You've got to think, think and preserve those discs. Pretorius there got a good result, but whether he'll still be lifting in five, ten years is another question. We'll have to see. You know, we, we can only hope that longevity sustained itself in our South African brother. Chris Jenkins, closest to us from Wales, another former powerlifter, so deadlift should suit him. Luke Cromwell in lane two. Leroy Smith in lane three, and Gardar Olafsson in lane Leroy number Leroy is looking strong in lane number three. Leroy up to four. Five reps for Leroy. Chris Jenkins hits number four. And Smith is closing in on that target of eight reps, still set by O'Hare. And he gets it, eight repetitions, one more now to see if he can go into the lead. He's got a hitch, hips through, wow. down signal, nine reps, and Leroy enjoys that one. He gets the, the nod to the crowd, basking in it's his nice felt feeling, glory. Knowing you've done a good job. It is, especially on deadlift. There's something that awakens itself in the soul on the deadlift, I'll say. Maybe Man it's versus bar, lift it from A to B. That's all that matters. No cheating it. There is no beating around the bush. It is very, really a primal type of actualization of power. 
Dell, Ahipin, Fondry, and Peters, respectively in their lanes, attacking the 610-pound axle. Naramu looking smooth in his first pull. Wants to defend or regain this title, should I say. Fondry on three reps. Peters on three. Dell hits three. Oh. Fondry is a great deadlifter. He's got awesome levers for this. Dell looking strong, closest to us. Del Peters Fondry on Peters. six. So close with each other. Dell hits six now. Peters on his way up with seven. He gets it. Seven repetitions for Peters and for Dell. Looks like Peters is gassed. Dell needs to give it his all. Oh, this time. All right. So Dell and Peters there taking seven reps. Big points for both those athletes. We are on former champion there, Naramu, only managing two reps. That's not what he wanted. But it's not over. We still have another event after this. And heat 10 is up. Joey Stemke, USA, lane one. Lane two, Volker Bauer, Germany. Lane three, Tyler Davis, USA. And lane four, Ryan Largier, USA. Stamke in lane one. Very fast in the early reps. As is Davis, lane number three. Five repetitions respectively for both those athletes. Six. Davis is on seven now. Davis taking pause after that seventh rep. Stamke taking pause as well. Stamke Davis. And Davis battling it between each other. Can they get eight? They both hit eight reps. Stamke is showing a little bit more energy left but he's pulling himself free of the bar. I think they're As both done. Davis. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But very solid once again. Eight repetitions. That's big points for both yeah, with men. As long as that last rep took both those men, I don't think with the remaining time, even if they did try a final no, rep, they would have gotten I it. I agree. They look like they spent that energy level. Our final heat of our men's under 90 class. In lane one, Aaron Blackford, USA. Lane two, Dan Benson, England. Lane three, Nikolai Myers, USA. And lane number four, Gavin McNamee, Ireland. Gavin is a big deadlifter. The defending champion, Nikolai Myers, USA. Lane number three. The pressure is on. His title on the line. Watch the Irishman in lane number four. He's a powerhouse when it comes to deadlifting. Wow, and it is showing. Myers needs to dig deep, defending champion. He needs as many reps as he can get on this event. Probably potentially his weakest event in the contest. He's got lots of good events to come. Benson. McNamee and Benson both looking really strong right now. Benson has, has more in the tank. He's at nine. nine. reps. And he's going to hit double figures. Look at that. He Our goes into leader. the lead. McNamee still moving, gets his ninth rep. But Benson here in lane two on 11 reps. No one's going to catch that now. Wow. And did Blackford just sneak in with his last rep there? I don't know that they're going to give it to him. But wow, 11 reps. Laws, 11 reps at 6'10 on an axle. I mean, this is a, for, for an athlete under 200 pounds. <laughs> it, would, it would make me burn to do this. Can you remember the last time you were under 200 pounds? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. Let's see, I'm going to listen in to what Lynn Morehouse is saying. Okay, that's very interesting. So what we're hearing is that our men under 90 kilo class with Dan Benson in the lead with 111 and a half points, followed closely by Cameron Peters in second with 109 points. 
A bit of a spread between Peters and Leroy Smith with 104.5 points. One point behind Leroy is Tyler Davis with 103.5. Two points behind Davis is Gavin McNamee in fifth place with 101.5. And Nikolai Myers, 100 points for six. Blackford closely behind by another point and a half with 98.5. And Pope, Ahipin, and Dell all closely following. But a bit of a spread between Pope and the linear champion, Nigarimu, with 85 points for him and Mike Dell in 10th tied. This is now finishing with a bag heavier than my own body weight by only a few pounds. And, uh, you know, whichever man is able to successfully get all four bags, I might have to further test his abilities when the contest is over, ask him to shoulder me. I think that would be unfair after these <laughs> athletes have done seven grueling events. Right, let's, let's punish the body even more and shoulder Gabe. <laughs> Maybe that could be a decider if we have any tied events. The there tied you go. Athletes. We'll, we'll pitch it to, to Lynn Morehouse. Such a fast reset time by our crew here. Just That'd be an interesting event, machine. shouldering athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you start with? You start with Rob Kearney, and then maybe like myself, then you, then we got Evan. And maybe a Brian Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I really sympathize for the man that has to try to shoulder Big Brian. That is uh, that's a that's very bone crushing right there. <laughs> We're working in that, getting bigger and uh, heavier and longer at the same time. I feel like we should throw Dimitar in that shoulder series. Well, that would, that would be know. an awkward one. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see the mighty Mikko back here today giving his best in contest. And we move on to our men's under 90 kilo class. A two-man heat steps up to the arena. Mark Marshall Kruther, New Zealand, lane one. Anthony Martin, Australia, in lane number two. The Southern Hemisphere putting their strength to the test on this sandbag ladder. 275, easy to the shoulder by Kruther. I'm liking Kruther's technique on those first two bags. Sticking the same technique on this third one. We'll put a hand underneath. And now he's going to try and thrust those hips forward. Bump that shoulder. That Beautiful. Up the shoulder's working really well. 15 seconds is enough time if he can move quick. 325. It looks to be more densely packed than the previous bag, but the time just escapes him, and it's not there. As we've seen, three sandbags in a good time. In almost every class so far, that's good points. Kruther of New Zealand off with a very strong start to set the pace here in our under 90s. Heat number two will be Kai Kendrick of Norway in lane one, Kevin Manson of Scotland in lane two, Stian Lonen Tua of Norway in lane number three, and Seth Larson of USA in lane number four. Kruther hit three bags in 28.41. Good time for three bags. Got two Norwegians here in this heat. Got Kendrick and Tue. Look at lane three. There's that Norse power in lane number three. Chalking up a little bit more. Larson, neck and neck. With these longer sandbags, it's just so much more challenging getting it sat on your lap. We're seeing a lot of athletes having to really battle just to get into the right position before they can focus on that transition up to the shoulder. You know, I might be mistaken, but I want to say that both the 300 and the 325, these last two bags in the series, are the same bag shell. The 325 is just more densely packed with another 25 pounds of sand. That's and correct. you're going to see that third one is, is that little bit of flop. It, it wants to give and shift on the athlete. It is not a stable set load. When all that weight kind of sinks to the bottom, it's very difficult. Especially with the athletes that utilize a technique that has it picked up vertically to the lap. You've got to really get that arm under like we saw mm. in Kruther of New Zealand in that first heat. Heat number three, Brandon McNamara, USA Lane 1, Mark Cummins, England Lane 2, Cesar Sierra, USA Lane 3, and Brandon Sowell, USA Lane 4. C 
Sierra in lane number three. Just a strong powerhouse proven through yesterday. Carries that momentum, followed closely by Sal. 300 pounds on the way to the shoulder. All four athletes. Sal gets it and moves on to the big bag. McNamara on the, in lane number one, catching up with the other. And he does, he sneaks in. Five ah, seconds, Sal needs to move. Time. It is not enough time, but wow, we saw three athletes in that heat all advance that final bag just with time escaping them to execute. We are going to continue to see that bar in performance pushed higher and higher as the heats advance. I was watching McNamara on the, um, in lane number one, and although he was slower to get the sandbag to the lap, once he was at the lap, he was very quick on getting it up to the shoulder, just wasting a little too much time, and he ran out of time in the end on the final bag. This is not a, uh, a time frame when the athletes can afford to psych themselves up in between bags. You need to psych yourself up before you step onto the arena and just bam, 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 bam. Execute, execute, execute every step of the way. Heat number four, Gardar Olafsson of Iceland in lane one, Jess Reeve, USA lane two, Paul Simbe of Zambia in lane three, and Grimu Ahipin, New Zealand, lane number four. Narimu in lane number four, looking very efficient on these sandbags so far through two. Can he keep that speed now moving onto these heavier bags? Olafsson in lane one. 300 and pounds Simbe. up to the shoulder. Look at this aggression from Ahipin in lane number four. The linear champion who did not get to compete last year is to wants to regain his title. Can he get his fourth and final sandbag? He's so close. He gets it. There we go. The flex of pride. Look at him. Narimu, former champion. He started off well yesterday in the Viking press. Dropped a fair few points in the next two events, but this will be big points now. He needed the performance. So correct me Obviously if I'm wrong. We, we cut down to 10 athletes after this. Right, but uh, Haipin, uh, in lane number four, yeah. every time he has competed here at this arena, he has been undefeated. I believe correct? so. I believe so and last year he was unable to compete for certain circumstances, but he's back and he wants to keep that streak going on. But he is far from the final heat. He dropped a fair few points yesterday, so he's got a lot of work to do. But, but he gained some good points there, Lars. Well, let's see how these next athletes do. He's in the lead so far, and that's the most important thing for him. He's done what he can control. Now he needs to sit back and watch these other fantastic athletes. Labriche, Cromwell, Elvin, and Largay in their Cromwell respective just lanes. Cromwell threw that first sandbag up. Cromwell of Scotland is the first to advance to the 300. And he's quick through two. Scottish power. We know there's a lot of power in Scotland right now. Scottish strongman has grown so much over the last few years. Obviously, the Stoltman brothers have done so much for that. But in all the weight classes, men's and women's, Scottish strength is on the up. That fourth bag, just a behemoth at the end of this series. Ready to test all who believe themselves worthy. Okay, moving on to our sixth heat. Our Chilean, Diego Valenzuela in lane one. The American, Justin Weaver in lane two. Another American, Chandler Caldo in lane three. And our Finnish athlete, Marcus Lane in lane number four. Looks like we might have a vacant lane number two. Yeah, not sure what's happened to Weaver. Justin Weaver is MIA. All right, and here we go. They can't wait for him. They will start. All right, there is no Weaver. He is out. 
A three-man heat. Lane and Caudill and Valenzuela, all three men onto the second bag. USA versus Finland on three and four. Caudill was in the lead, but he just wanted to re chore. See if taking that time to get this third one pays off. Yeah, he looks good. Can he Chandler, get it balanced? Caudill. No, does he get it? He does. He got the, he got the down command. Chalking Lane is up. battling hard on that third bag as well. Gets it. Just out of time. You know, this is a... You see Caudill right before that fourth bag chalking up, you know, wanting to give himself the best fighting shot, but at 45 seconds on the clock, whatever chalk you have on your arm... You've got to rely to, on it, yeah. you? You can't afford missing out on the time, and we've seen it done. We've seen athletes move through the whole series without needing to re-chalk. So these are just possible mental hurdles that need to be overcome. You don't need that extra chalk. You just need to keep that gas pedal down Sometimes and operate. For some athletes, it's a security thing almost, isn't it? You're just kind of thinking, you almost get into a habit of doing it in training, and then you have to do it in It almost becomes ritualistic at that point. Like you got to check off that box, almost like a rocket before takeoff. But here, right. the, you cannot have a long list of things you need to do. You just need to We've operate. Current champion, Nikolai Myers in lane number three. Devin Ford, USA Lane 1, Volker Bauer, Germany in Lane 2, and in Lane number 4, Lars Ovin Auren of Norway in Lane number 4. There's going to be a race between 2 and 3. The defending champ, Uncle Nick, Lane number 3. Very explosive to the shoulder. Bauer answering the call. Who gets this bag? Bauer and Myers both going well. Myers taking a little bit longer to adjust his bag, but 10 seconds left. It needs to happen now. This is it. I don't think they're going to do it. Oh, just out. Oh. Nick was so close. Fraction of a second. Aaron Molin, his judge, was ready to give him the down command, but it just wasn't there when the whistle blew. He almost timed it well. Almost. Uh, and, you know, he had to readjust the bag on that pick. And that two to three seconds that he had to use there. Be interesting to see because it? if he got that fourth bag, he would have been guaranteed second place. I'm not sure where he's going to end up from his time on the third sandbag. Lane number one, Aaron Fondry, USA. Lane number two, Andrew Pepiot, USA. Lane number three, David Zemlicka, Czech Republic. And lane number four, Jean Arthur Pretorius of South Africa. Aaron Fondry in lane number one, making a comeback to the, the competitive arena. He had both of his hips replaced earlier this year. Wow. But showing no signs of such an operation. Fondry, an absolute machine on that first bag. That's quite incredible to think he's had two hip replacements and he's back competing at this world level. And not just competing, doing exceptionally well. He is a powerhouse of an athlete. I, I remember seeing him in my early days of competing at national championships. It's so good to see him back here, especially after bilateral hip replacement. And we're on to the fourth sandbag. Fondry is right there, one of the strongest deadlifters in his weight class. Look at this. 325 to the shoulder by Pepiot wow. in lane number two. He is happy about that. Look at that roar. He should be happy about that. That is a massive sandbag. Huge. Huge, huge lift there with that sandbag. Laz, you and I both know how hard it is to shoulder a 300-pound bag or a 300-pound stone. I mean, this is this is heavy stuff, and these guys weigh under 200 pounds to make weight for this event. And that is a bag over 125 pounds heavier than their body weight. I mean, I'm always <laughs> blown away watching the lighter weight classes. What some of these athletes can do, it's truly incredible. Pound for pound strength is nothing short of impressive. All right, Derek Owens, USA in lane one. Chris Jenkins, Wales, lane two. Sean Pope, Canada, lane three. And Mike Dell, England, in lane number four. My fellow Texan brother, Derek Owens. Owns Battle Axe Barbell in Texas. He and the athletes under his wing have practiced this sandbag ladder religiously. And that precision is showing on his way up to the 300-pound bag. Look at Owens go. Onto the 325, he needs to move. He is moving. This well. is his event, if he can take it. He's got time. 
36 seconds to beat. I'm not sure that how. Posterior chain is gassed. Come on, Derek. He needs to go. Look at that Come extension. On. Oh, he's just caught over his head. Come on, Derek. Get the hand away. Owens gets it. Well done. Wow. As does Dell, I believe, in lane number four. <laughs> he is I think, happy. I think he's just sh saying he's happy. Yeah, I think so too. We, we don't need to have captions for that. <laughs> but you can very much relate to that sort of uh, just supreme satisfaction of putting every bit of effort and power into getting well, it and then It's succeeding. months and months of preparation for these contests and the emotions build up. And when you kind of put in a performance like that, you just let everything out. What a release. What a release. All right, heat number 10, Cameron Peters. Lane one, Joey Stamke. Lane two, Nicholas O'Hare. Lane three, and Tyre Davis. And lane number four, all USA athletes. Cameron Peters, a very precise and fast athlete I've seen proven over and over. The lightest bag moves well for all four gentlemen. O'Hare looking very good in lane number three. Fast. Davis as well, not far behind at all. Both those athletes now, all three of our athletes are now onto this 325 pound sandbag. Look at Davis there at the end. He gets, gets it. it. That might be our new leader over Ahipin. And Peters is battling hard, closest to us here. Wow, come on. Oh, oh. it just cripples him. O'Hare oh, battling as well. Peters, slow to get up. Let's make sure he's okay. He did take a spill. He's okay. Just exhaustion, I think. Maybe a bit of a knee issue. Uh-oh. He's limping away. It's Hopefully, Peters is okay. He did take a bit of a spill and 325 pounds of. He was really having a fight with that sandbag. He was very, very efficient through the first three. That 300, 325 pounds, it's a huge weight. I hope he's okay. You know, that's, that's a lot of force here. But our, our final heat Aaron Blackford, USA Lane 1, Gavin McNamee of Ireland, Lane 2, Leroy Smith of the UK in Lane 3, and Dan Benson of England in Lane number 4. Quick by our Irishman in lane number two. McNamee and Smith in the center lanes. Looking strong. Can Leroy get this handbag up? McNamee does. He moves on to the fourth, as does Leroy Smith. Smith has good positioning compared to McNamee. Ten seconds remain. It's now or never, guys. He's got to drive those hips forward. Thrust that sandbag up. Oh. Cannot do it. It's a huge weight. Good battle. Wow. For our, our final heat of athletes, none of them got that last bag. We yeah, saw some stellar the points around a little bit. Yeah. Make yeah. things interesting to decide who is the top ten going into our final three events. We'll be back to bring you all the results officially once all our heats are done, I believe. We have our men's 105 kilo class coming out next. We are going to lose our lightest bag and gain an even heavier bag at the end of the series. So how many, I think we had three or four athletes manage the, the 325. Now we're moving up to the 350. <laughs> this is big. Big so bag. 350 is like Martins at Rogue last weekend. The yeah. biggest Martins we've ever seen. He yeah, weighed in at 350. Uh, big Martins. Here's our men's under 90 kilo scores. Tyler Davis with four bags in 29.41 seconds. I'm quite a spread ahead of Ahipin with four bags in 36.98 seconds. Derek Owens. That roar of satisfaction after he was done. Four bags in 41.34 seconds for a third place. And Andrew Pepiot with only one second to spare, getting the four bags in 43.99 seconds. But look at Mike Dell. <laughs> in the nick of time, 0 .09 seconds away from that time cap, 
securing a fifth place finish with all four bags in 44.91 seconds. Right in the nick of time. All right, and our sandbag to shoulder ladder left. But he is showing consistency and power through every event at every turn. Our men's under 90 kilo class is up next for the car walk. The car is raised to 800 pounds, 363 kilos. In heat number one, Sean Pope in lane one and Dan Benson lane two, Canada versus England. And we're underway, that was quick. Benson clears it with no drops, smooth and steady. Sean Pope not finding the running so easy at the moment. And uh, perhaps he's uh, picked this up just a little too high. He's almost driving into it and forward every time he stands up with it. It's, uh, it's not going up, but directly forward. Has he got an injury or is it just uh, incorrect form? You know, I'm guessing that he is just so blasted, he is resulting to a technique of just pick up and lunge, hoping for every last bit of distance he can possibly get out of this car walk. You know, I have been there before, and that comes from a point of realizing that you just don't have the ability to go, so it is a last-ditch effort. But I tell you what, Colin, he's going to take some negative strain away from those repetitive picks going into the Circus Dumbbell and, of course, the Atlas Stones. Yes, that's a good point. Sometimes uh, it might just be better just to get a, a few inches and, and expect the others to finish and maybe take away a little energy for the next event. But it's easier said than done when you are the first heat to go, not knowing what performances are to follow you. Very well said indeed. Dan Benson finishes with a time of 11.87 seconds, our current event leader, but I know that won't stand for long. Heat number two, the defending champion, Nikolai Myers of USA in lane one, Leroy Smith of the UK in lane number two. Never much time to waste. Myers closest to camera. Smith on the far side. They are asked to get set, and we're almost underway. Eleven point eight seven seconds. The time of Benson to beat. Myers steadily through. The defending champ, no drops, clears the course. Might not be as fast as Benson's time, but he gets it done. So there is your defending champion, Nikolai Myers. I'd love to hear what he's got to say. <laughs> Me too. He is you know, riding a, a successful carry there with a time of 13.24 seconds, currently putting him in second on this event behind Dan Benson. Might I add that uh, the camera he was talking to there, it's uh, Joe Schofield, and those who follow officialstrongman.com will know Joe is one of the uh, lead uh, creatives and editors on the channel, and uh, you'll no doubt enjoy his... Uh, film post-produced after this later on sometime this week or next and you'll be able to hear exactly what he said as we see a replay there Smith of England now would you wear such a big chain around your neck if you're about to super yoke I would not I'd make sure that neck was nice and clear but it might be a good luck charm and this is the final luck yes. is key indeed as uh, we have uh, Gavin McNamee of Ireland against Cameron Peters of the USA McNamee finishes fast with Peters trailing behind. Did we have a car beater there? We have a car beater there, and he got chewed out by our, our <laughs> MC. <laughs> Crime number one in, in the official Strongman games. Do not touch the cars, you, no matter you how wanna, fast you are. <laughs> don't want to be on a Aaron West or Lynn Morehouse's hit list, I tell you that. Big error of that. Hey-ho. So Gavin McNamee 
of Ireland, putting in a, a really quick run there. Cameron Peters, pretty chuffed with his performance. Our new leader, Gavin McNamee from Ireland, 9.2 seconds, I believe, is his time. Sub 10, our first sub 10 finish in our men's under 90 kilo class. There we have it, 9.26 confirmed. Our fourth heat, Mike Dell of England will be in lane one versus Derek Owens of USA in lane number two. This is our penultimate pair, and then we have uh, the final duo with, with the Kiwi, Ahapene, against uh, Davis the American in the final pair coming after this. Directly after this is Dellen Owens, take to the cars. Underway, and it's uh, all even Stevens at the moment coming up to the halfway mark. Call this one, would you? We have Gabriel. Owens starting to accelerate, but with the drop, Dell takes the window of opportunity, closing the distance. Smooth and steady, he does it. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey, and uh, it is Dell who manages to get over the line with a, a very slow and steady approach. Owens. Overstriding a little bit in the middle, trying to get away, perhaps. Is that what caused the, the drop? Perhaps, but, you know, he is still happy about that performance, exiting the car with a smile on his face. You know, Colin, any day you get to carry a car on your back and do it successfully, I think that's a pretty good day, something to feel powerful about. Absolutely. Now, tell me, what, what's, what's the list of sins physically? Is it, is it, is it overstriding? Is it, is it having too high a pickup at the start? I guess it's a, a, a catalog of things that could cause problems. There's a catalog of things that could cause problems, but let's start from the ground up. I think footwear would be one of the biggest mm. factors here. If you're wearing a shoe that is squishy underneath you and you've got 800 pounds on your back plus your body weight, at a point, you have a 1,000 pounds of force on one leg in between your step. If you've got a squishy sole, that could rock you back and forth beyond your control. But who knows what went wrong with Derek there. I think you might, might be right, actually. It, uh, his uh, shoes just seem to be squishing a little bit. In fact, both men choosing sneakers over a, a harder sole. I prefer a hiking-type shoe or a hiking boot. Just give me that rigidity and support, something that really is meant to carry us over a long duration with possible equipment. Seems to favor me well on yoke, but we move on to our final heat. Ingarumu Ahapene of New Zealand up against Tyler Davis of the USA, and it's the 2019 champion, the lineal champion, if you like. He never lost his title, the New Zealander, closest to camera. There he goes, picking up a distance, and I think we have a finish in first by our lane number one. We'll have to get a confirmation there. Uh, that was so close. Davis was making the running, but uh, Ahapine was charging fast at the end there. And you, I think you might be right. McNamee oh. will still have that sub 10 second run that I believe will keep him as the event leader. Of course, New Zealand having such strict COVID laws. 2020, it never happened. 2021, he couldn't make it here. And I'm guessing that's some, some family members. I love seeing that. A shout out to his loved ones back at home, all the way across the world. Good effort. Yes, you're right. You called it absolutely right. 13.24. He was the faster of the two, but we did see times from the likes of Gavin McNamee of 9. Look, a dead tie with Nikolai Myers right there. Both getting 13.24 seconds on the dot. Well spotted. Yes, indeed. Dan Benson did 11.87, so he certainly got in ahead of the Kiwi. And uh, that uh, rounds out our category for under 90. 363 kilos on the back. Has some impressive times. McNamee does 9.26. The only man sub 10 seconds. Dan Benson just under 12 seconds in second there. Cameron Peters leads a charge of men in 13 seconds. Uh, he's in third, just ahead of the Kiwi, Ahapene who is still hoping to uh, hang on to his title that he won back in 2019. He is the lineal champion, as I said, and uh, he never lost it, is how he sees it. Sean Pope, the only man not finishing in the category, and our overall points at the moment is McNamee by half a point. That was crucial for him to go in the lead after five events ahead of Peters Benson. Davis equal third, and my goodness me, all within... Uh, 
what is just three and a half points is Ahapine in fifth, but that's a very close fifth. That to top first. five right there is it within such close striking range of each other. With two events remaining, anything can happen there. And I think we're in for some really incredible jaw-dropping displays yet to come. We are getting ready for our men's under 105 kg class. The car is being raised to an even heavier load, 900 pounds, 408 kilos. Ready to be carried by our two athletes up first. In lane one will be Justin Loy, and in lane number two, Frank Provenzano. Both men hailing from the USA. Class event and still win. He cannot even do it. Do you see that no, happening? No, this is Mark Felix. This is Mark Felix. All right. Sean Pope in lane one of Canada and Derek Owens, USA, lane number two. The reality is, I think Mark will go and win the Stones as well. <laughs> yeah. Mark has been shown to be a dominating force here this weekend. This is why they didn't let Mark do the over 50s last year. <laughs> <laughs> they said if Mark does it, no one else will enter. Pope and Owens. Synchronized drive, and even though Owens fumbles in the beginning, he now Moving pulls through. ahead. Derek Owens from the USA. And furthermore, from Texas. Texas Not power on this 200 pounder. Oh. Just a big object. Our next heat will be Mike Dell of England in lane one and Leroy Smith of the UK in lane number two. We've got another epic matchup of England versus UK. <laughs> We've had a few of these this weekend. <laughs> I wonder if it just comes down to filling out a form. And some people just say they're from the UK, some people say they're from England. I'm imagining that's what it is. So far, Owens gets to attempt the 200, but falls a bit short. Leroy Smith getting his wrist strap set. 140, 160, 180, and 200 pounds. In kilos, that is 63 and a half, 72 and a half, 81 and a half, and finally a 91 kilo dumbbell. Rapid technique from Smith, but he does press it with one arm. Very reactive. He's flying judging. through these. Needs to be balanced. There we go. Nice technique there. We're looking at our new event leader in lane number two. He's going to do Smith. this. Lots of leg power. This is going up. Yes. Beautiful run. There Leroy. we go. Leroy Smith flying through the dumbbell ladder. You know, he never once took off that necklace for any event. <laughs> It's kind of his trademark. I, th I think it's a good luck charm and really showing to be effective. Come on, Dell. Mike Dell. Oh, he's close. Can he get it? Yes. Did he? Get yes, he did. Advancing to the 200. I think time is about to escape. That's it. Leroy Smith finishes so fast. He. 23.94 for all four dumbbells. Incredible. One dumbbell almost every six seconds. And what a pace. And when we talk about dumbbell presses, we have an incredible dumbbell presser coming up now. Nikolai Myers, Uncle Nick, the record holder in the under 90 kilo class. And... Grimu, or let's see, this is Tyler Davis, I'm sorry. Tyler Davis versus Myers. Lanes one and two, respectively, both USA athletes. Let's watch lane two, because Myers is extremely good at this event. Fast. He needs to be quick on the transition. Leroy Smith was so fast on those first few. He's put that pressure on Nikolai. That's better. That's more like it. He moves on to the 200. We oh, know he can Myers do this. Dumbbell. He needs to recover Myers it. He's making small mistakes, and it's allowed Davis to sneak in in lane number one. Who's going to get this? Leroy Smith is safe. Nikolai gets the dumbbell. Oh, Davis. Wow. 
Not the that's, best run we've seen out of Myers, and that but. That shows what pressure does. It does. Leroy Smith was so quick through that that Nikolai was feeling that pressure, made a couple of mistakes on almost every dumbbell there. Dancing the line between speed and recklessness, but still coming out with a great time. Oh, good effort there by Davis. So close. Nikolai Myers, four dumbbells in 30.9 seconds with a second place event finish. It's still a solid time, especially considering how many little mistakes were made there. Leroy Smith, though, the dominating force up to this point on this dumbbell ladder. All right, now we have our lineal champion, as he's been called, Nagrimu Ahipene from New Zealand in lane one, and Cameron Peters, USA, in lane two. Let's see how these two do. Narimu, good, solid first dumbbell. Peters also through the first one, no problem at all. Both athletes lift the 160 dumbbell, no problem. Narimu looking so precise and powerful. Technically very efficient. He's not made any mistakes. There Beautiful. we go. Beautiful All run. Four. How does that stack up against Leroy's time? We will see. Let's see all smiles from the lineal champion, Ahipene, New Zealand, as Peters attempts to finish the series. Oh, is he okay here? Yeah, he's fine. Sometimes the dumbbell can look so much worse than it actually is when it comes down on you like that. <laughs> it's a big bell. But Grimu, 32.21 seconds. That leaves Leroy Smith still in the lead as we move on to our final heat. Dan Benson of England will be in lane one, and Gavin McNamee of I'll Ireland that, in lane two. That time of Leroy Smith is going to be exceptionally hard to beat. It's fast, very fast. McNamee and Benson. down to who makes the least amount of minor mistakes. Benson looking great, inching ahead. Benson in lane number one. Yeah, looking very nice Beautiful. on every rep so far. He's not rushing, making sure the dumbbell is nicely balanced. McNamee still looking very technically precise. Oh, Benson just couldn't quite lock that out. Both men moving together on this 200 pound dumbbell. McNamee up to his shoulder, Benson up to his shoulder. Can either of these finish this ladder? Yes, Benson, Benson. can. And McNamee will leave it there. He knows the stones are up next and he needs to save his strength for it. He's a good stone lifter as well. He's a great deadlifter. But I believe that will leave Leroy Smith's time untouchable as an event leader. We'll get the confirmation shortly. We will reset the arena. And here we look at the men's under 90 scoring in this dumbbell ladder. Leroy Smith, 29.94 seconds. A full seven seconds ahead of Uncle Nick in second place. Green Wahipene. 32.21 seconds for third. Dan Benson in fourth place with 43.6 seconds. The only four athletes in this 10 athlete roster in the final to get all four dumbbells in this series. Oh, ho, 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 ho. We wow. are in for <laughs> an exciting <laughs> final event. Oh, Laz, tell us about what you see here. Narimu Apipen is in the, well, joint lead alongside Dan Benson and Cameron Peters, all three athletes. 250, 275, 300, 325, 350, and a massive 375-pound Atlas Stone await these men. 
in kilos, 113 and a half, 225, 136, 145 and a half, 159, and 170 kilograms down the line. Our first heat of men will be Sean Pope of Canada in lane one and Mike Dell of England in lane number two. Under 90 kilos, these men had to weigh in at 200 pounds or less, and their first stone starts at 250. My goodness. It's just, the ante just keeps going up, doesn't it? Pope versus Dell. Canada versus England. Almost in sync. Being very cautious, making sure that stone sits in the well. That is not something you want to have to deal with, a stone rolling off the back of the platform. You are absolutely right about that. It takes a lot of effort to get that thing there. You don't want to have to go running after it. How cool are these red Atlas stones? Love them. Love them. Absolutely a very love planetary them. Mars look to them. Dell, the first to attack the 350-pounder. The Englishman, he gets it to tower. Very strong. 375. The first heat, are we going to see the sixth stone? I think he is just a little bit out of tacky and out of time. He wants it. And time oh, expires. Such a good effort, though. <coughs> now, I will say, being the... First to go on a set of new stones with, the, with a new stone at the very end. The stone has no tacky on it at this point. It is a disadvantage for the athlete, but the price to pay for being the lowest placing up to this point. All the other athletes to follow will have somewhat of a fresh coat of tacky on there to assist. Whether or not that's a good thing, depending on their tacky preference, we'll see. But... Nikolai Myers in lane number two versus Derek Owens in lane number one. Both USA athletes. Nikolai Myers, of course, the defending champion. Derek Owens, a Texas athlete. <clears throat> Just want to reiterate in this class, the point spread <clears throat> is so, so close. Every single stone, every single second matters. These points are going to be big. The top five, even the top seven, are all within striking range of each other. This means a poor performance can cost very heavily here. The athlete needs to be consistent, powerful, and accurate. But those are all words that are no stranger to these two men. Absolutely. Owens versus Myers. Who wants it more? Who is going to get that top spot? Sprinting to that first stone. Love it. Myers gets there Easy first. Easy one motion by both gentlemen. Myers starting to pull ahead, but not by much. On to the fourth stone. Owens. Owens pulling ahead. Myers fast on the return. This is where it's going to really count. Owens. An easy 350 stone. 375 for these two men. Who wants it more? Derek just pulling back a little too quick. Myers to the lap. Myers to the lap. Can he get it? He needs a secure grip. This is a massive object. Nick Myers. And, and he, he gets, gets it. it. The defending champion, the first man to complete the Six Stone Series. 375 pounds for that man. Evan, did you see that bicep he sprouted right out of his beard to help assist on that stone load? It ah, was truly phenomenal. That the has defending to be the champ. Secret. The defending champ. Wow. He's happy about that. And that is a massive, massive stone. Very well may have its own gravitational field, but it is no match for Uncle Nick. But well, we still have three heats remaining. In this next heat will be Leroy Smith. 
with a lightning fast circus dumbbell performance he is fresh off of, hailing from the UK. And in lane number two, Tyler Davis of the USA. These men are only separated by three points, vying for a podium placing, and more so, the title of world's strongest man under 90 kilos. But anything short of a six stone run is gonna be less than the points needed to secure those top spots. Absolutely, this is where precision and speed come into it. No mistakes, absolutely no mistakes can be had in this stone run. You need to be strong, you need to be fast, and you need to get all six stones, and you need to do it fast. Nick Myers with a time of 55.24 seconds on the six stone run. Leroy Smith in pants. I'm hoping they don't get in the way and stick to the stone, but a man who clearly knows what he's doing here. He has made it to the OSG finals. Again, an incredible performance on that circus dumbbell run with a time of 23.94 seconds to complete all four dumbbells. Let's see if that speed will carry over to the stones. Davis, very, first up. Very strong. One motion from Davis. One motion from Smith. Smith continuing the one motion. Both men, neck and neck, seemingly synchronized in their rhythm. They continue to the 350. We are already on to the fifth stone. Davis pulling ahead We barely. are on to the sixth stone for both gentlemen. Who wants it more? 375. Davis on the way up. He's almost there. Just goes too quick. Here comes ah. Smith lining the shot. Oh, and this massive stone may prove too much for these gifted men. Ten seconds left, and I think time will escape them. Leroy wants it, but the clock ticks. And Nikolai Myers Ooh. remains in the lead with a successful six stone run. Absolutely grueling, grueling event this is. Wow. That should really tell you something about how difficult this is under these circumstances. These are the top 10 best athletes in the entire world. And only one man has gotten that last stone. Well, Evan, a 375-pound stone is a stone that we usually find in the middle of a run for us. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're both very familiar with this weighted stone. And guess what? It's not light. It's quite heavy. Quite heavy indeed. Our next heat will be our second to last heat. Gavin McNamee of Ireland in lane number one, and Cameron Peters of the USA in lane number two. Uh, we saw Cameron Peters, after the last event, kind of hobbling off the field. But hopefully it was just a little strain, and he looks to be standing fine, ready to attack these stones. But Nick Myers, if he can maintain his lead as the only man to get six stones, that's big points. But... These last two heats are comprised of the proven highest talent on the roster. McNamee versus Peters. Ireland versus USA. Let's see if we're going to see that six stone loaded again. <coughs> Mistakes on that first stone. No mistakes on the second stone. Mm -hmm. 
Both men nearly neck and neck as they approach the 325. Starting to see the fatigue weigh in. McNamee pulling ahead. But not by much. Peters onto that fifth stone as well. 350 is up. McNamee on the 375. Vying for Meyer's time. Can he beat 55.24? Can he get the stone up? And he... He ju just shy. Just Peters shy. has a window of opportunity. My goodness. Time will escape Peters. Just barely. Just barely. And even My then, Peters goodness. seeming to catch that ledge right there. Gabe, you do not get closer than that. Both oh. of those men. Again, just like you said, it shows how impressive Nick's performance was yeah. securing that final stone to tower. Our final heat. The men will make their way to the arena. Dan Benson of England in lane one and Garimu Ahipene of New Zealand, the lineal champion who unfortunately missed last year's contest due to COVID regulations. He is here to prove his streak will continue so long as he can conquer these Atlas Stones. Need I remind the crowd and the listeners at home that these last three men, these last four men are only separated by half a point with Ahipene, Benson, and Peters all tied for first currently with 39 and a half points. Performance is everything here, and it literally comes down to the wire with this class having the highest stakes going into this final event. Absolutely. Every single mistake will cost you dearly. I can promise you that. You want a flawless stone run, and you want a fast one. The athletes inspecting their stones. England versus New Zealand. Benson versus Ahipene. Quick on lane two. He means business. Ready to attack Myers. But Benson is looking strong. You see these boots by Garimu giving him a little bit of extra height, but also a longer pick off the ground. Oh no. Oh. Just missing that lip. This is, wow. Benson pulls ahead. Benson onto the 350. Grimu giving a rerun on the 325. Another fumble. Grimu gets it. He needs to move the clock. Is moving. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds left. You need to move. Benson pulls ahead. There's no time. You need to move. Wow. Nikolai Myers, the only man to complete the six stone series. We will have to see where the points lie. I cannot make any any assumptions here. Absolutely not. That was way too close. Now Myers was four points behind. The pack that was trapped in the 39s. Will the defending champion's performance give him the win? Will that be enough? Okay. Our scorekeepers are hard at work verifying. I'm so anxious, Evan. <laughs> I want to see where I'm these on points the edge fall. Of my seat. Who is our podium? I I really would love to see Myers and his jaw-dropping performance there, being the only man to get 375, getting that defending championship and securing the win. We'll have to see. Definitely crushing for Garimu. That is the perfect scenario to explain that every single point matters. Every single second matters. Every single time that you step onto the platform, you need to give it your all. And here we have it. Tyler Davis, our world's strongest man under 90 kilograms with 47 and a half points. Nikolai Myers. Jumping from fifth to second with that Still securing a second place finished after the contest is said and done half a point ahead of gavin mcnamee 45 points for a third place finish for gavin and cameron peters 
half a point behind McNamee with a fourth place finish. And a shout out to Leroy Smith, only one point behind Peters. And just look at that spread. Just <laughs> absolutely incredible. It really came down to the wire there. But Tyler Davis, a two point lead over the defending champ. Ooh, man, that USA, USA, and Ireland on the podium here at the official Strongman Games. Tyler Davis crowned the strongest man in the world under 90 kilograms. All right, 90 kilogram men. This was by far the tightest class. Sixth place to first place before the stones was separated by one point. And it shows the performances, how the shakeup was and where we ended up. So without further ado, in 10th place, representing Canada, Sean Pope. In ninth place from England, Mike Dell. In eighth place from the USA, Derek Owens. He still hasn't punched the car. Great guy. In seventh place, I didn't say his first name all weekend because I had his last name right. So, Nadimu Ahipeni. Was I close? In sixth place, representing England, Dan Benson. In fifth place, from the United Kingdom, Leroy Smith. In fourth place, from the United States, it's Cameron Peters. Getting into the tight points race again in third place from Ireland, Gavin McNamee. Up to the podium, good sir. In second place, edging Gavin by a half point, it's the United States, Nikolai Myers. And this year's World's Strongest Man, under 90 kilograms, coming from fifth to first with a clutch stone performance. It's the United States, Tyler Davis. By far one of the most exciting groups to watch this weekend. All right, your U90 class. Come on out, 105s. 105 men's, come on down. You should just get used to coming out 10 at a time. I think Lynn said he wanted to start running 10 lanes instead of four. 